EA Interviews, Episode 89. Inspiration, Transformation, Success Stories, and the Imperfect Action Round. Seven days a week. Join Mario Ficini for today's Expert Authority Effect interview. Why every business needs a book, including yours. Would you like to save five plus hours with every prospect, generate more leads and profit in your business now? Visit businessbookchecklist.com and learn how you can implement this in your business today. Steve, it's great to have you. How are you doing today? Hey, Mario. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. I wanted to ask you, what made you even start business? How did you get into it? Why did you want to do it? Because Lord knows it's not the easiest thing in the world. Yeah, you know, it's funny on, on my own podcast, I always joke with our guests that, uh, you know, being an entrepreneur is not something that normal people would do. They run from it, right? It's all this risk. Um, I actually kind of stumbled into business. I, I have a technical degree in a really tiny discipline in engineering called geomatics. Got out of college, went to school for a consulting firm that, uh, that did that kind of work. And I was the 10th employee there. Uh, was actually really lucky, got kind of taken under the wing by the founder. And four years later, he asked me to take over as CEO. That's sort of how I got, you know, thrust into to the role of, of running a business. Um, and uh, just, uh, you know, it turns out now looking back that um, it was probably the right role for me because otherwise I'm unemployable. Um, I, I like, uh, you know, being the person that's out in front setting the vision and and uh, kind of driving things forward. And so now I'm in my second business and uh, just having a lot of fun with it. What would you say to someone who's maybe starting off, they're in their first or second business early on, regardless of what business they're in, what would you say for those first one to five or five to 10 years that you experienced with the baptism by fire, just being thrust into it. How do you overcome? Because I know you're hugely successful now and congrats on that. Thank you. But how did you get into it the first five years? Because if you don't make it through those, you don't make it to the 10 to the 20. Well, so I had two very different experiences. So in that first business, the business had been around for 10 years. And so I was taking over a business that was running. We had cash flow and, and I had no idea how great it was to come in at that stage because you're taking something that's already working and then you're, you know, you're multiplying it. And um, that was a very different situation actually required a different skill set than starting the, the second one from scratch. Um, at that stage of that first business, it was really about how do we, we had demand. We, you know, we sort of solved for the, you know, having enough work. We actually had too much and it was first, how do we staff it? So it was, you know, leading people, managing people, building systems and and that whole end of things, kind of going from a really small company to, uh, you know, a slightly larger 20, 30 to ultimately about 50 people um, in the firm. And um, as you go through those changes, you know, you've got to create different structures. So that was sort of the first experience. Um, the second experience was vastly different because I was starting from scratch and it was just me and, and, uh, you know, and, and the challenge there is what are you going to sell? Who are you going to sell it to? And, uh, and how are you going to sell it? And, uh, you know, the funny thing is, I mean, now we help businesses go out and identify 
who they're going to sell to and, and get their marketing and their sales put together and working. Uh, going through that process myself, I had no idea how difficult it was until I went through it. And, uh, and, and the first critical thing there, if you're in that position is first choose your ideal client, figure out who you're, who you want to be a hero to and, and make that as focused a group as you can. Once you do that, all of the other answers become infinitely easier. But the thing that I see people get tripped up on is they're hungry. They need work. They need clients. They need customers. And so they, they want to be real loose and broad with that definition. And it's a little bit um, counterintuitive, but the minute that you get specific with that, all of your results begin to speed up because you've got focus. What's a quick way that you found to help identify who your ideal client is? Well, if you've got clients, the easiest way is to look at your best clients. And we define an ideal client across several dimensions. And so first is they need to be profitable. Why would you optimize for an unprofitable client, right? I've seen it happen, but they need to be profitable. Um, You know, they need to be the client that gets great value from the work that you do. And, um, and, and the client that doesn't drive you crazy in the process. Um, at the end of the day, uh, if you're building an entrepreneurial company, you're heavily involved in, in building it. It needs to be something that, that you can wake up to in the morning and be excited about going into. And so you, you want to look at, at those different dimensions and kind of solve for that. Chances are, if you've got clients, then you can answer that question by picking out three or four or five of your existing clients and identifying what their commonalities are. And that's usually a good shortcut to getting to the answer. Very good. So with your new company, who would you say you help and how are you helping them? So we really exist to be a hero to uh, to consultants, to, to uh, coaches, to professional service businesses, people that get paid for their expertise and who got into business because they love what they do. But they might not be super excited about marketing and sales. Um, and so our job is to come in and help them create systems. And, and we also provide kind of the, the team that will support them in their marketing activities so that they don't have to, to spend a lot of time on that. So uh, that's really who we serve. And it's, it's a blast. I love working with those people. It is a lot of fun because there's so many people out there that are good at what they do. They have the skill set. And I love hearing success stories of people who want to start a new business and they're the best at what they do. They go, you know what? I think I'm good enough to do this on my own. And I encourage them. Yeah, you are. But they don't realize there's a whole business side to business. If you're good at painting or sewing or cooking or auto detail or whatever it may be, dancing, that's great. That's a huge skill set. Good for you. But you also need the business side of things, and one of the large things is marketing. So what would you say is a a transformation you're taking them to if they don't know what they're – if they're great at their skill set, but they need to get over and get more advertising, what's a process you would take them through to make it easy on them? Well, in in most cases, actually, advertising isn't the first place we go. Um, For most of our clients, they're selling some a service that's expensive and requires a high degree of trust on the part of the client to make that purchase. And what we have found is that relationship is, is the key to making that sale successfully. Um, advertising is not the best place to create relationship. It's not, there's nothing wrong with advertising. It's just that you're going to invest a lot of money testing and tweaking all of the follow up steps that have to happen after they see the ad to make that process work and, and really work well. And so we really focus on. Um, on a couple of simple techniques that get them in relationship with influencers that can refer them. And sometimes they refer them massively. You know, they may go and, and interview someone who's got a, a large audience and then turn around and, and extend that collaboration to doing a webinar where they're presenting, you know, all of their expertise to that person's audience. Um, and, uh, and they may be going out and connecting with potential clients as well. And, building relationship that way. And we use a podcast as kind of the facilitator for that. And we can certainly talk about why we use that, but, um, but, but that's the essence of it. And then the other thing that we help them with is um, we've actually streamlined a process for kind of extracting their main message, their main point of view, because every expert has their, as you know, 
They have their point of view. This is how the world should work, in my opinion, right? That's what makes them an expert because they've got good reasons to believe that. Um, they've proven it through their experience and their education. And oftentimes they have a really difficult, um, you know, they have a difficult time of it when they're trying to take that, that opinion, that worldview and get it out of their heads and get it onto their website and into their early marketing materials in a way that other people can understand. And so we, we take them through a three day process. We actually, we're in the middle of one right now. We start on a Monday, we end on a Wednesday. And in three days, we extract all of, all of that worldview out, write all the copy for them, um, wireframe out the website so they can have their web person put it together, create a little video for them that basically will walk a potential client through that expert's process. So now they've got a tool that will sort of sell for them or pre-sell prospects for them. And we use that kind of as the foundation of their marketing. And then we use a podcast as a way for them to develop relationships in an ongoing way over time. That's fantastic. I'm so happy to hear that you're doing it this way. And why would you do it in three days versus take 30, 60, or 90 like a lot of people do? Well, so when we've worked with bigger clients in the past, um, you know, where you've got multiple people who are having to give input and approvals, that process can drag on for three or six months. And it's not only miserable for us to go through because we, you know, we like to get it and get things done. Um, you know, oftentimes it, it ends in a suboptimal product for the, that big client because so many people have it. It's, it's sort of death by committee for the message, the marketing message, right? We'd rather come in and say, and work with the, you know, our, our ideal clients and say, look, over the next three days, we're going to need you to be a little bit flexible. We're going to meet in the morning on the first day and in the morning on the second day, we're going to record your video on the afternoon of the third day. And we may need to jump on a call here and there to clarify some things, but we're going to get it done really quickly. In fact, we just are this week working with a client who has spent the last eight months with a web design firm trying to get his website done. And he was responsible. The client was responsible for all the website copy. And he just hadn't been able to get it out of his head and, and onto the page. And it's just so much fun to watch because that's, that's kind of the typical experience for somebody building out a website when they're trying to come up with that copy themselves. And we just, you know, we ask them some questions. We take them through our, our process that, you know, that's pretty structured. And all of a sudden we've got all of their great ideas out and on paper. And then they get to see it and they go, Oh my God. I've been trying for six months to do this. And, um, and so it's a lot of fun to watch. Um, but three days is way better than six months. Why would you do it in six months if you could do it in three days, right? I agree 100%. When I take people through my eight-week masterclass for publishing their book, they think it's going to take 12, 18, 24 months or something. And it's like, no, no, just pay attention and listen and keep taking action. And it doesn't Absolutely. matter where you're at. You brought up a good point with the uh, – you brought up a good point with the web design because that's what my company started with over a decade and a half ago. And it's so unfortunate to hear that. But at the same time, I'm glad there's people out there like you that are actually helping with it. So here's the double-edged sword. Most web designers do make the company responsible for the copyright. Hmm. Sure. I've heard I've heard of people say, well, shouldn't the web designer take care of it? Would you say that – you should hire a web design firm to do your copywriting. I would not. Um, and nor would I necessarily hire a, a, you know, a firm that specializes in marketing strategy and, and copy and message to do the design part. They're different skill sets. And, um, and so you've got to look at that. Now, are there firms that do all of it? Sure. Uh, there absolutely are. Um, but. If the firm you're working with is primarily, you know, handling the design, the look and feel, that's great. They can be a huge asset. I think design is an incredibly important uh, criteria to have kind of in your site. We're seeing more and more that well-designed sites tend to, to create trust on the part of, of the potential client. So you need that talent, but you also need somebody who can look at your expertise and listen to you as you talk through your expertise and extract that and then turn that into a message that's going to sell. How important would you say the messaging is in any business? 
I think it's the most important thing. So I, I mean, we break it down for our clients and, and we tell them, look, as the, as the leader of the business, as the CEO, you really have four roles. And um, the first role is vision. So you've got to set the vision for the business, which is both an internal and an external thing. You have to, that vision is, is really the leadership role. You're, you're leading your team if you have it, but you're also leading your clients. Your clients desperately want your leadership. Well, the number two role is message because message is how you take that vision and you communicate it both internally and externally. If you can't communicate your vision to your potential clients, you can't lead them. And they want someone to lead them through this problem that they have that you can solve. Um, and so we, we think it's that important. It's the number two role. Um, the, the, just to finish out that thought, the, the third role that I think is really important as a leader of the business is to design the systems that are going to create the value for your clients. And then the fourth is to create the ideas or the intellectual property, the, the proprietary process that you take people through that is uniquely advantageous, that's different from, you know, anyone else in your field. And so, those are the four roles. And I think message is hugely important in that. Very good. I love that. How would you say the podcast is helping your business and your clients? And I do want to ask a caveat on that also because sure. you mentioned it earlier. Are you helping your clients set up podcast in addition to that or are you using it as a platform to connect them with the people? We're For our clients, we're creating a podcast for them. Oh, excellent. And we could talk a little bit about how how that works i think it'd be useful for for everybody that's absolutely go for it to understand um and and it's the same reason that we you know we started our own podcast um it can be incredibly difficult i got this advice from um from a couple of very well known very large and and well established uh podcast hosts uh, names you would know and we're a mastermind group together and they actually discouraged me from starting a podcast and they said the monetization of it's difficult. Creating the audience is nearly impossible. It's like drawing blood. Well, their, their method for monetizing it is I, I got to have a lot of ears. I got to have a lot of listeners and we're going to monetize it through sponsorships and through offers to that audience. And if you're going to try and do it that way, yeah, it's probably a long, hard road. Um, our approach is a little bit different. We believe that there's tremendous value. There's a tremendous wealth actually in very small audiences, but you have to approach it differently. So the way that you use the podcast then is not for the consumption side, for the listenership. You have to look at, at, at the listenership as what I would call a strategic byproduct. It's great if you get it, but it's not the real reason you're doing it. Okay. The real reason you're doing it is you want to have a media platform where you can go and invite uh, a key influencer in your industry. And invite them in and say, you know, I've got this podcast. I'm interviewing all the, the biggest leaders in the industry. I'd love to interview you for 20 or 30 minutes. What do you say? And most business people will take about a nanosecond to reply to you. And go, yeah, absolutely. Right. Because they want to promote themselves and they'll take every opportunity to promote themselves. And so it's a way for you to start a relationship with someone that you might not know, give them value upfront and instantly. Go out and promote them to everybody that's in your network, whether you've got a big network or a little network, it works. And, um, and now you've created this relationship with them. And the next time you call them, they're going to answer the telephone. The next time you email them, they're going to see it. They're going to be familiar. They're going to reply. And you've now got this relationship that would have been very difficult to create in any other way. Um, and so that's one of the, the ways that we use it. The other way we use it is we, We'll go out and book guests who are potential clients of, of our clients, you know, so prospects for them. Um, and these might be hard to reach business owners that instead of being just another salesperson where they're trying to storm the gate and get past the gatekeepers and do all of that, they're able to go out and again, give value to that business owner, give them the opportunity to promote themselves. And then, you know, now I've got this relationship that wasn't started because I'm a salesperson. It started because I'm an authority in the industry because I've got a podcast and you were a guest on my podcast and I invited you on. And we now have rapport. We spent 30 minutes or an hour together on the phone. Um, again, you're going to pick up the phone the next time I call because I've done something. So now I can extend that conversation into figuring out, you know, how can I be of 
further service to you? What are your goals? Where are you going? Where are you trying to grow your company? And can I come in and add value to that and help you get there faster or cheaper or more effectively? Um, and that's, to me, that's the best way to start a, a sales conversation is understanding where their goals are. You've already got a relationship, a budding business friendship. And now you just sort of go to the next natural place. Well, how can I help you? You know, now that we know each other, we like each other, we've be, started this trusting relationship and I know what your goals are. How can I help you get there? You know, and whether that means doing business or making connections or whatever, just to me, that's the best way to do business. So that's how we use a podcast. It, it's all about the, if you do a weekly podcast, it's all about the 52 people that you're going to interview in a year, not about trying to get a hundred thousand people to listen to it. I love that you have a servant's heart in our collaborative. I noticed that even before we went live, and I thank you for sharing that with us. Expert Authority World, if you have ears to hear, go back and listen to this because what he is saying is solid gold. I want to ask a follow-up question on this. What is the best way you found to get people onto your show or a couple of them? Well, so two, two ways work really well. Number one, cold outreach actually works quite well for this. Um, uh, because again, you're showing up as an authority. You're showing up as an expert, somebody who, who is the host of a media platform. And the longer your podcast exists, the easier it gets. Um, and, uh, you know, because you've got proof, you've got, I mean, we're 130 or so interviews episodes in, into our podcast now. Um, we've had all kinds of business celebrities on the podcast over the last two and a half years. And now I can name drop. So it gets easier the further you go. But even in, in the beginning, you can get people to, to come and to show up, even if you don't know them. And so if you are thinking about, well, how do I reach out to people that I, you know, prospects that I don't know yet? Number one, that's a fantastic way. But the other way that we do it, sort of the secret weapon is at the end of every interview we ask. So, you know, who are two people that, that uh, you think might be a good guest? You know, might, might be good to come on and share their story on the podcast. And that almost always turns into introductions. And what you find is, um, your, your network just sort of, sort of grows kind of exponentially from there. And it can be very, very powerful and a huge business asset. Well, I appreciate you for sharing that with us and, and me because. I'm always looking for ways to bring more great guests on the show, and I've had the pleasure of having great people like you and many others, and I can attest to this because th I loved it when you said the longer you do it, the easier it gets. That's what I'm going yes, for. Absolutely. absolutely. That's what I'm going for. So let's talk about your books. How has publishing your books helped your business? Uh, books, books are fantastic. If you're in an expert business where you're really getting paid for your expertise primarily, um, and you don't have a book, you're at a huge disadvantage. Um, and, and I mean, we can unpack that. I think a book is, is enormous on a number of different levels, but first and foremost, it allows you to get your ideas and your worldview out there and allow the ideas to do the selling for you. And, you know, when I talk to, to experts, the number one thing that, that they all seem to have in common is, for the most part, they don't like to sell. They would rather the clients come to them, the clients be pre-sold, be bought into their worldview and understand what it is that they're selling. Uh, and so when they come, they've already made that critical decision that, you know, hey, Mario, you're my guy. And, um, and a book, I think, goes a long way to getting you there. So that's number one. The idea is do the selling for you, too. How, how important you know, do you, would you say sales are to a business, though? I think it's the most important thing. Without that, you don't have a business, right? So, so, tell, just, so tell me about bridging the gap with that as far as – I agree 100 percent, and I'm thinking of people. I'm kind of chuckling because I know <laughs> tons of people – most of my clients, too, are going, I just want to work on what I'm good at. I don't want to sell. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. I'm like, okay, so you don't want 99% of the business. You just want to do what you do. But that's how it is. Who wouldn't want people lining up? So how are you doing that with the books? Well, the the books, they they have this really great way of of creating relationship with people that you've never met. Because you're sharing a lot of information, you're sharing, you're sharing your best ideas, 
and um, and you really should be sharing your best ideas. Um, to me, creating a book is is really an act of, of generosity. You're giving away that thinking, um, you know, for for a relatively small price tag, um, and it gives you a, a way to establish your your own authority, your credibility uh, that that frankly, the vast majority of businesses don't have. It's not that they don't have access to it, but uh, I know you do this in your own business, Mario. It, it, you know, getting a book written is not necessarily the easiest thing in the world. It's not as difficult as most people think, but it's also not something you're likely to do in a short amount of time. Um, you know, I mean, we've, I'm, I'm on, I'm on book three right now. We've kind of gotten the process down to about a day, but these are, we're now kind of going to short format books. Um, rather than a normal trade paperback. But uh, my first book took about 90 days to write, um, which for a lot of people, that's record time. You know, so it, it can be a, a big undertaking. And because of that, it creates this barrier to entry. And you've now set yourself apart. Um, even though, I mean, there's a proliferation of, of self-published books these days, it still sets you apart. It absolutely so, does. Before we go to the imperfect action round, let's talk about your newest book. Yeah, I'd love to. So um, this is book number three. This is going to be a little bit of a different book. And um, and it's going to be released here in uh, the next week or two. Um, so mid-July 2019, uh, depending on when you watch this. And it's called The Follow-Up Formula. And um, it really is... Uh, kind of a, a blueprint of how to follow up with a potential client without being creepy. So if you've ever found yourself sending out a proposal and then getting radio silence from that potential client, and then, you know, you're tempted like a week later or two weeks later to make that dreaded, Hey, I'm just checking in phone call. Uh, don't make that by the way. Um, this is going to kind of show you how to follow up both in that situation and in uh, in a lot of other common situations in business. So like new leads and things like that, um, how to deal with those. And what I have found over the years in our work with clients is that a lot of times clients want to go, um, they, they take the, the mindset that I've only got one shot at this. You know, it's like the short attention span sort of theory to it. If I get everything that I ever needed to say in this one email that I'm going to send, then you know, at least I get it all out. And what we found is that the far better approach is to think in terms of conversations. And so classic example of this, uh, a couple of years ago, I was working with a, a realtor um, out in California and he was getting, he was paying for leads from uh, Trulia and Zillow and, and those, those real estate websites. And so uh, he said, look, it's a race to get back to these people. And I have this email and it, I printed it. It was like two and a half pages long printed. And it had all of his, you know, all of his certifications and he had a lot, all of his qualifications, how long he'd been in the industry. It had some references. I mean, everything it was too much, right? So if you think about it, if in that situation, when someone clicks on the little button on the website and says, I want info about that house and he gets the email, what's the next logical thing that they're likely to, to want a phone call well I, what they're more, actually more information on the house yeah they probably want to see it you know they probably want to see the house and so we changed his approach and he sent a one-line email back to him you know subject line was the the address of the home and the in the body the only thing that was in there was a question would you like to see the house what did and that do for the conversion rates? I mean, you can't even measure the change in conversion because it was almost nothing before. I mean, it was almost <laughs> zero. And now it took it to, you know, to, to something that was incredibly high. Um, I think he ended up the 20, 25% response rate to that. And, and it wasn't always positive, but he was getting responses where before he was getting nothing. And, um, and we actually built out a whole series of these little questions. And so if they answered yes to that, great, you know, is Tuesday or Thursday better for you? You know, and we take them down this conversation path as if we were talking like you and I are right now, where we can see each other face to face, but just doing that through email. Well, about three or four in, 
we may, we said, okay, well, this is the right time now to try and get them on the phone. Hey, it'd be easier if we just did this by phone. I'm going to call you right now. Here's the number I'm calling from. You'll see it on your call right now. And that started getting him in contact with people um, and actually converting these leads. And you can do that in any business, but you have to shift your mindset and begin to think in conversations. And so this book is, it's, it's really more than a book. It's designed to teach you the skill of follow-up so that you can now adapt this to your own business situations. That sounds phenomenal. Where's the best place that people can get it? Well, they can go to our website. If they go to unstoppableceo.net, um, they'll be able to find it there. And we've actually put up a page just for uh, your audience and we'll add it um, when it's launched. We'll add it into that page as well. Um, and, uh, in fact, what we'll do is we'll add today, we'll add a link where they can sign up to be notified, um, before it's launched. And then once it's launched, they'll be able to get it. So if they go to unstoppableceo.net slash expert authority, they'll be able to get that there. And, and, uh, there's a bunch of other free, um, uh, free things that they can get there. We've got, uh, actually a free copy of my last book called, uh, the, the exponential network strategy, which talks about how you can use a podcast and use interviews to connect with potential clients and, and referral partners. Um, you can get that in ebook and audio book form for free, um, you know, and, and no strings attached there. Um, and we've got a couple of other guides that will help you get clear on who your ideal client is and, and how to pre-sell them. Excellent. Well, I appreciate you making that available for Expert Authority World. I know they're going to appreciate that. We're going to go to the imperfect action round right after we thank our sponsor. Why every business needs a book, including yours. Would you like to save five plus hours with every prospect, generate more leads and profit in your business now? Visit businessbookchecklist.com and learn how you can implement this in your business today. And we are back with the imperfect action round. Steve, are you ready to take imperfect action? Let's do it. 60 second rapid fire responses. First question What is the fastest path to the cash? Fastest path to the cash is to find the relationships, find the right relationships, and, and build those quickly. You can waste a lot of time doing a lot of other things, but that's the key. I love that. Number two, what is the biggest problem you see your prospects making and the fastest way they can fix it? Uh, biggest problem we've already actually touched on. Biggest problem is defining your market too broadly. The f- best thing you can do is focus in, find your ideal client. Uh, we talked about they need to be profitable. They need to be people that get good result from what you do. And they need to be people you enjoy working with. And find those people and serve them. Excellent. Number three, what is the best way to maximize customer lifetime value? Get them results. Plain and simple. You got all the right answers today. I'm loving this. <laughs> I agree 100%. I'm trying not to say too much. I agree 100% with... We, I mean, we can go deeper, but that's, that's the bottom line. Get them results. You know what? Let's go just a little bit deeper because that was the last question. I do have a couple more for you, but yes, please go deeper because I know it's an important thing and a lot of people overlook this. Well, I, I think you've got to figure out how to get them results. Um, and I, I think that's a challenge in every business. Um, you know, we, we've actually just, we revamped some of our offerings over the last couple of years. And, uh, you know, we talked earlier about the, the three day, you know, create your message process. And part of the reason that we did this and, and the reason I want to lay this out for everyone is, is I think it's useful to think about this in your own business. Um, we looked at, we at how can we give our clients the a really quick result inside the first week that they work with us where they're walking away feeling like wow i got tremendous value out of that and that's where that came from we just sort of let go of what are we going to do and just said if we have 3 days to create an amazing result for a client what could we do and that's where that came from and um, when you begin to think like that now you start to go Oh, all right. Well, I can take just one little thing and give them a result really quickly and make them really happy. And yeah, you got to keep giving them result over the long term. But I think the faster you can deliver that value right up front in the relationship, the happier they're going to be. Let me ask you the three day. Why not one? Why not two? Why not five or 10? Would would you you say arbitrarily just pick a number because everyone else is doing it or? 
something else? We, um, we felt like that was achievable for us, you know, like the three day can work. Um, and, uh, I'll be honest, um, I'm in a mastermind group with a lady named Pia Silva. Um, and she does something similar in three days. She's got a three day version and a five day. And so there wasn't a lot of, uh, magic to that. We just said, Oh, well, she's doing something in three days. Well, I wonder what we could do in three days. And so we just picked that number. Um, and, uh, and, you know, and, and that's really where that came from. If you can do something in one day, do it in one day. If you can do it in an hour, do it in an hour. If it's got a lot of value, but we knew we could deliver a, an awful lot of value that would move the needle for our clients in an important way. And we could get it done in that amount of time. Excellent. A lot of people ask that because they see four weeks, six week, eight week, 12 weeks, 16, 30 day, 60 day, 90 day, one day, whatever. And it's like, there's no magic number. You have to know your business and your clients. And that's the one, you know, that's best yep. for you. Absolutely. What book would you say has changed your life the most? Oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> that's a tough question. Yes. Cause I read a lot of books. Um, first and foremost, the Bible. Um, and I read every day. Um, and, uh, and whether you're, you know, religious or not, there's tremendous wisdom in there that, that will impact you. Um, and, and that's had a huge impact. Um, if we look at a business book, um, probably think and grow rich more than anything. And, uh, I'm a big fan of Napoleon Hill. If you have read that already, then go read Outwitting the Devil by Napoleon Hill, which was released recently within the last 10 years um his family actually um forbid forbid that it be released until i think 50 years after his death and uh and so it was just recently released and and it's a fantastic read as well if you want to work on mindset outstanding book great recommendations on all three accounts and if you noticed i didn't say business book so i'm glad you said that and i'd also say that regardless if you're religious or not it's probably better you're more spiritual than anything. But that's a whole other interview in and of itself. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, we'll come back for that one. That'll be fun. Steve, it's been an absolute pleasure. I'm glad we got to do this. Thank you for sharing your wisdom and knowledge. And I can't wait to go deeper with you and continue to build the relationship because I really enjoyed this. Absolutely, Mario. Thanks. Thanks for having me on. It's been a lot of fun. I hope everybody listening got a lot of value out of it. Look forward to connecting with you. All right, Expert Authority World. We have another great interview with another great guest. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a great day and God bless. Why every business needs a book, including yours. Would you like to save five plus hours with every prospect, generate more leads and profit in your business now? Visit businessbookchecklist.com and learn how you can implement this in your business today. Hey, thanks for listening to today's episode. I hope you got a lot out of it. I know I sure did. If you haven't done so already, I invite you to subscribe to the show. And also be sure to check out eainterviews.com for complete show notes, the full interview video experience, links to the resources we mentioned, and more. Have a blessed day, and I'll see you tomorrow.